Now come, I could do nothing. 
to the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before him in his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people, and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving, and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him, and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endures to all generations. I know the truth is sufficient because it's God's word. Amen. Our Father, we are in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us our daily bread. Forgive our debt to us as we forgive our debt to us. For, for, for lead us not into temptation, but deliver us peace. For thine is glory, power, and glory. Amen. Amen.
this time we're going to have a welcome coming from Mother Martha Johnson. Good morning, good morning, good morning. We are so glad to see you here this morning on this Palm Sunday or what they call Passion Sunday. And you know, we're, we're so glad to see you because we're hoping that with your visit here today, your passion for the Lord will increase. We're hoping that with your visit here today, something will inspire you to be a better Christian. We're hoping that with your visit here today, your spirit shall be uplifted. So on behalf of our pastor, um, Reverend Lewis, and the Anderson Chapel Church family, we say to you, welcome, welcome, welcome. Amen. 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 To all our visitors, we do say that you are here and you are welcome if we have a visitor who would like to acknowledge who you are and have a word of response to you. So <laughs> to your own pastor here, to the deacon, saints, mother, and first lady. We do thank God for being here one more time. I, and I uh, accept that beautiful welcome coming from my <clears throat> beloved sister here at Anderson Chapel and hope that everyone else will accept it too. So on behalf of all Christians, we accept that warm and hearty welcome. This time we have our youth meditation. Uh, Sister Glenn, Linda Melbourne is going to come forward with our youth that she shall uh, share with them this morning. Amen. Let's give her a hand. Come forward, please. You know, once there was three trees on the hills in the wood, and they were discussing their hopes and dreams, and I know all of y'all dream and hopes, we all do that from time to time. When the first tree said, someday I hope to be a treasure chest. I could be filled with gold, silver, precious gems, and I could be decorated with the carvings and everyone will see my beauty. <laughs> then the second tree said, someday I will be mighty, a mighty ship and I will take kings and queens across the rivers and sail to the corners of the world. Everyone will feel safe in me because of the strength of my hope. Finally, the third tree said, I will want to grow to be the tallest and the straightest tree in the forest. People will see me on the top of the hill and look up to my branches and think of the heavens and God and how close to them I am reaching. I will be the greatest tree of all time, and people will always remember me. After a few years praying that their dreams would come true, a group of woodsmen came upon the trees. When one came to the first tree, he said, this will look like a strong tree, and I think I should be able to sell the wood to be a carpenter, a carpenter. and he began cutting it down. The tree was happy because he knew the carpenter would make him into a treasure chest. The second tree, the woman said, this looked like a strong tree, and I should be able to sell it to the shipyard. The second tree was happy because he knew he was on his way to becoming a mighty ship. 
When the woodman came upon the third tree, the tree was high because he knew that if they cut him down, his dreams would not come true. One of the woodmen said, I don't need anything special for my tree. I'll take it. Take this one, and he cut it down. When the first tree arrived at the carpenter's, he was made into a feed box for animals. He was then placed in a barn and filled with hay. This was not all what he had prayed for. The second tree was cut and made into a small fishing boat. His dreams of being a mighty ship and carrying kings had come to an end. The third tree was cut into large pieces and left alone in the dark. Right. The years went by and the trees forgot about their dreams. Then one day a man and a woman came to the barn. She gave birth and they placed the baby in the hay in the feed box that was made from the first tree. The man wished that he could have made a crib for that baby, but this manger would have to do. The tree could feel the importance of his event and knew that it had held the greatest treasure of all time. Years later, a group of men got a fishing boat made from the second tree, and on um, and one of them was tired and went to sleep. While they were out for the water, a great storm arose, and the tree didn't think it was strong enough to keep the men safe. The man woke the sleeping man. He stood and said, peace, and the storm stopped. At this time, the tree knew that it had carried the king of kings in this boat. Finally, someone came and got the third tree. It was carried through the streets as the people mocked the man who was carrying it. When they came to a stop, the man was nailed to the tree and raised in the air to die at the top of the tree. When Sunday came, the tree came to realize that it was strong enough to stand at the top of the hill and be as close to God as was possible because Jesus had been crucified on it. I want you all to know that no matter what happens, if you place your trust in God, God will give you your greatest gifts. Each of these trees got what they wanted, just not in the way they had imagined. Amen. We don't always know that God's plan, what God's plans for us, for us all. What we know is just know that his ways are not our ways, but his ways are the best ways. Amen. Okay, that's all I have this morning. Any Bible verses? <coughs> Start a in the spirit for theirs are the kingdom of heaven. Um, Father, not Jesus will. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. Thank you. 
recognize those of you who are celebrating the anniversary of the month of March, if there are any who are celebrating the anniversary. Acknowledge yourself. Amen. 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 Everybody's uh, kind of quiet. Now you can get kind of loud. It's time to give it time. Amen. 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 Worship and giving. The Lord has blessed us to be a blessing to someone else. Let us bring you your tithes and offerings to the storehouse. That it may be good enough for all. Let us, as the officers shall come, trustees and members that are uh, responsible today are for their coming. Let us reach and give freely as the Lord has given to us. Amen. Brother Dennis, if you'll come stand with me. Give one of my cookies to you like this. for the mission.
Thank you, one and all. <laughs> thank you, officers, for the receiving the offering. Thank you for your gift and your giving this morning. The Lord has blessed us greatly. I'd like to say we're so delighted to see you with us. Uh, uh, Sister Arnell May with us this morning. We like to be going through some, uh, some health issues, but the Lord has blessed us to be here this morning. So, before I just say how great it is, we uh, just want to acknowledge that this morning. Also, we want to remind you that on next Sunday morning at 7 a.m. How uh, great. I was, in, I was getting ready this morning and I, and I looked at the time I said, hmm. Next Sunday, I said, I got to be up early in the morning. I got to be up early in the morning next Sunday. But it's worth it all because Jesus, he rose. He rose and because he rose. Greg Sloan writer, Bill Gates will say, because he lives, I can face tomorrow. So we are delighted. Next Sunday morning at 7 a.m. We're coming for Sunday by Sunday. So, amen. 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 Uh, at this time, I know what's on the, I know what's on the program. I, I, but uh, every now and then, we, we do make some adjustments to our programs. Uh, in your insert, in your insert, uh, on the back side of the insert is uh, Palm Sunday or, or Passion Sunday. And I know that it's in your insert, but I also, also know how we are. Mm. Not everything that's stuck on the insert that we, we read all the time, particularly the younger we are, uh, and sometimes the older we are, we may be this place and we don't need to, to read that. So we're going to ask Evangelist Knight to come. She's going to share this with us. And following this, we're going to we're going to ask uh, uh, Deacon Ray May. He's going to he's going to come and pray. Uh, uh, well, actually, we're gonna do, we're gonna do, we're gonna, we're gonna do, a, do just a little, a little different. I'm asking Deacon Jamie to come and to read the scripture after uh, <clears throat> Evangelist Knight reads this scripture, Matthew 21 and uh, verses one uh, through eleven. Matthew 21, one through eleven, and following that. Uh, Deacon J. May is going to lead us in prayer as we prepare ourselves for the morning messages and then the choir will say, Amen. 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 being here to my pastor, to the deacons, mothers, saints, and friends. We truly are thankful for this day, for on this day began the last week of Jesus' life. He was on his way to the cross. It began with Palm Sunday, or what is known as Passion Sunday. Holy Week is the week beginning with the Sunday before Easter and going up to Easter Sunday. The Sunday before Easter is Palm Sunday or Passion Sunday and generally celebrates Jesus' triumphal entry into Jerusalem. The Thursday is Lonely Thursday or Holy Thursday and remembers the Last Supper. Good Friday is the day that we commemorate Christ's death on the cross. Finally, Easter Sunday is a great day of celebrating the resurrection. Palm Sunday, the first of the four holy days in Holy Week, is a Christian movable feast that falls on the Sunday before Easter. The feast commemorates Jesus' triumphal entry into Jerusalem, an event mentioned in each of the four canonical gospels. The feast was marked by the crowds who were in Jerusalem for Passover, waving palm branches and proclaiming him as the Messianic King. The gospel tells us that Jesus rode into the city on a donkey. Enacting the prophecy of Zechariah 9 and 9, and in so doing, emphasized the humility that was to characterize the kingdom he proclaimed. 
The irony of his acceptance, acceptance as the new Davidic king, Mark 11 and 10, by the crowds who would only five days later cry for his execution should be a sobering reminder of the human tendency to want God on our own terms. Mm -hmm. In many Christian denominations, worship services on Palm Sunday include a procession of the faithful carrying palms, representing the palm branches the crowd scattered in front of Jesus as he rode into Jerusalem. The difficulty of procuring palms in unfavorable climates led to their substitution with branches of native trees, including box, yew, willow, and olive. In the accounts of the four canonical gospels, Jesus' triumphal entry into Jerusalem takes place about a week before his resurrection. The symbolism is captured in Zechariah 9 and 9. The coming of Zion's king. See your king comes to you, righteous and victorious, lowly and riding on a donkey, on a coat, the foal of a donkey. It suggests that Jesus was declaring he was the king of Israel to the anger of the Sanhedrin. According to the Gospels, Jesus rode a donkey into Jerusalem, and the celebrating people there laid down their cloaks and small branches of trees in front of him, and sang part of Psalm 118, 25 and 26. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. The symbolism of the donkey may refer to the Eastern tradition that is an, it is an animal of peace versus the horse, which is the animal of war. A king would have ridden a horse when he was bent on war and ridden a donkey to symbolize his arrival in peace. Jesus' entry, in, entry to Jerusalem would have thus symbolized his entry as the prince of peace, not as a war-waging king. Traditionally, worshipers enact the entry of Jesus into Jerusalem by waving the palm branches and singing songs of celebration. Sometimes this is accompanied by a procession into the church. In many churches, children are an integral part of this service since they enjoy processions and activity as a part of worship. This provides a good opportunity to involve them in the worship life of the community of faith. In many more liturgical churches, children are encouraged to craft palm leaves that were used for the uh, to craft crosses of the palm leaves that were used for the Sunday professional into crosses to help make the connection between the celebration of Palm Sunday and the impending events of Holy Week. This Sunday is also known as Passion Sunday to commemorate the beginning of Holy Week and Jesus' final agonizing journey to the cross. The English word passion comes from a Latin word that means to suffer, the same word from which we derive the English word patient. In most traditions, the liturgical church or Christian, color for Palm Sunday is purple, and that color is used until Easter Sunday. Thank you. Okay, our scripture reading comes from St. Matthew, the 21st chapter, beginning at verse 1 through 11. And when they were near unto Jerusalem and, and were come to Bethany, Bethany, right, unto the Mount of uh, they sent. Then sent Jesus to the side, saying to them, Go into the village over against you, and straightway ye shall find the ash tied and a coat with her. Loosen them and bring them unto me. And if any man say out unto ye, to you ye shall say, The Lord had need of them, and straightway he will send them. All this was done that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophet, saying, Tell ye the daughter of Sidon, Sidon, Behold, the king come in thee meek, and sit upon an ass, and a coat that fall off an ass. And the disciples went, and they did as Jesus commanded them, and brought the ass and the coat, and put them on their clothes, and set him on their, their own. And a very and a very multitude spread their gum in the way. Other cut down branches from tree and threw them in the way. And the multitude that went before and followed cried, saying, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is that blessed is he that come in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the in the house. 
And when he had come unto Jerusalem, and all the city were moved, saying, Who is this? And the multitude said, This is Jesus, the prophet of the another of Galilee. I read from the first to the last verse of St. Matthew in the Cranford chapter. Good morning. Let us pray in the word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we come this morning. Father God, I just give you the glory and the praise. Right? Lord God, we come this morning realizing this was the week, oh Father God, where they, they tried you, and Father God, they hung you on the cross. Yes. But Father God, we're so glad that on the third day, you rode with all power. Yes. Yes. So, Father God, you realize, Lord, that we need someone to save us, Lord. Because, yes. Lord God, we have come short so many times. Yes. And Lord Jesus, we know that you were the only one who could save us from our sins. Yes. And for that, on this day, Lord, we just tell you, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And thank you, O oh God, for just rising up out of the grave, Lord. Yes. And Father, and you roll, you had all power. And Lord, we just come this morning just to tell you, thank you. Thank you. Oh God, you have been so good, so kind, so merciful. Yes. Well, Father, we just thank you for everything you've done. Thank you for what you're going to do. And oh God, we just... We just said thank you, God. Oh, God, you are wonderful. Yes. Lord, we ask you all these blessings in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Put your hand together. Oh, my God. 
my everything. How many of you know God can be your everything? Joy and sorrow. Hope for tomorrow. Doctor in the sick room. All you in the courtroom. God is my everything. Give it all in praises unto God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. It's good to be in the house of the Lord one more time. Amen. God has blessed us and kept us and just allowed us just to assemble here in this house of worship on this Palm Sunday. Amen. I'm so delighted to see each of you. Some I have not seen for a while. Some I just seen just yesterday. Amen. But amen. It's good to be here. It's good to be able for, for you to see me and for me to see you. Because right. it could have been the other way. Amen. You could have been looking upon me and I could not be looking at you. But I'm so glad that God spared me yet another day. Right. Those of you with your Bibles, we invite you to return to the Gospel of Matthew chapter 21. The Gospel of Matthew chapter 21. Uh, verse, we shall begin reading in verse 12. Amen. And Jesus went into the temple of God and cast out all them that sold and brought in the temple and overthrew the tables of the money changers and the seat of them that sold doves and said unto them, It is written, My house shall be called the house of prayer. But you have made it a den of thieves. Huh? And the blind and the lame came in, came to him in the temple, and he healed them. And when the chief priests and the scribes saw the wonderful things that he did, and the children cried in the temple and said, Hosanna to the son of David, they were so displeased. <coughs> And said unto him, Hearest thou what these say? And Jesus said unto them, Yea, have you never read out of the mouths and babes and suckling? Thou hast perfect praise. And he left them and went out to the city of Bethlehem and lodged there. Pray with us. Gracious Father, it's again that we come at this time. Before these, your children, Father, we come as humble as we know how, Father. Right. Acknowledging that we're not able of ourselves, Father, but we stand in this holy place. Oh, yeah. And Lord, we ask that I will send the preacher right now, the Holy Spirit, Lord, that he may use my tongue to yeah. preach your word. Use my mind as a storehouse of wisdom. Let the same spirit abide with these, your children, that someone may receive a special blessing. Father God, those who are not saved, dear Lord, will draw closer to you. Those who have accepted you, dear Lord, will draw, will draw closer and closer. Father, as the work that you have set for them to do is still yet unfinished. So, Father God, we just thank you. We give you the glory, the honor, and the praise. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Verse 12. And as Jesus went into the temple of God and cast out all them that sold and brought in the temple and overthrew the tables of the money changers and the seat of them that sold doves. I want to use, talk to you briefly this morning for the subject, it's time to clean up. Amen. Amen. It's time. To clean up. Right now. Now before I go too far into my message, I just wanna just wanna give you the words of the Wheels brother. Sweep around your own clean door. Before you try to sweep around somebody else. It's time to clean up. It's time to clean up. You know, life is full of many obstacles and mysteries that we have to face each and every day of our lives. Right. Just when we think that we have everything figured out, something else comes our way. Mm -hmm. right. mm -hmm. 
when you think you have your finances in place. Mm. Even ready to retire. Yeah, something comes your way that makes you rethink what you're about to do. But we still force ahead because we are set with the progress at hand. Even in our children, with our children, when we think that we have shown our children all that they may need to know, a sickness or disease enters into our lives, whether in us personally or maybe in their lives, that causes us to rethink everything. Mm -hmm. And we're not quite sure where we're headed. But one thing we do know, that change is still constant within our lives. Well, I say this because... I face it, you face it, and in the midst of all these changes, we have things that we knew that we need to let go, but because of the urgency of the change that's taking place, the things that we needed to let go or move around has kind of got pushed to a point, hmm. you know? and we have forgotten about those things, and then when things calm down, and we are able to focus again. Right. We begin to clean up around our house. Mm -hmm. We begin to clean in this corner or that corner. And things that we had sat around for 10 years suddenly reappear. Right. Mm -hmm. Not because it had never gone anywhere, just because you've been so occupied that you forgot about it. Mm -hmm. You know, we've been in the midst of that ourselves. We, 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 we've been We've been planning, I've been, I've been planning and figuring and looking forward to making a move to a new residence sometimes. Some of the obstacles and problems just keep coming my way. That just had me just out of the way where every time I think I'm ready to do it, something hits me and the door closes in my face. So finally I decided I just go and just, just settle right where I am for a little while longer. And I began to do some work around home there and, 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 and Lois began to begin to clean up, she said a spring cleaning, but spring cleaning for her is more like cleaning out 10 years of stuff that has accumulated and we're finding things that we've forgotten all about and as we clean up, we begin to feel a little better. We're finding pictures of children in school, we're finding pictures of babies, we're finding report cards, we're finding all these things that Seemingly, we, we knew they was there, but we had forgotten where they were. All right. mm -hmm. So cleaning up brings a new re realization, All right. gives us opportunity to reposition things in our life. Amen. Amen. It gives us opportunity to see where, where we are. All right. One of the reasons why we, we've been cleaning up is just we had, we had a problem, we had a water heater to, to, to leak some water and it caused the floorboard to, 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 to warp and buckle and got a weak spot there. And every time I stepped into the tub, I stepped out, I had to be careful right. because I didn't want to go through the floor. Right. Yeah. And the interesting thing about it, I say this because now that the floor is solid, mm -hmm. every time I step out of that tub, I step on that spot, I'm still mine. <laughs> because... It's been like that so long that we are mindful of the things that are going on. What are you trying to say, preacher? Some of us, we have been dealing with certain situations in our lives. And it's been so long going on in our lives. Now that we have changed our lives, we are still mindful of the hurt that someone caused us. And we don't want to, we don't want to walk. We walk lightly around them. Because we are afraid that that old hurt, that old pain, it's going to cause us to fall through. But it's time to clean up. Hmm. What's all this have to do today, preacher? Come on. Well, we look at today as Palm Sunday. Jesus triumphant angel. He's coming into Jerusalem. We know what's all about to happen. Those of us that have been reading the Bible, but for our youngest and those who are babes in Christ, we know that Jesus is entering into Jerusalem. 
Yeah. He comes in and before he, he before he, he gets there, he comes to Bethany and he's in the Mount of Olives and Jesus sends two of his disciples. Oh, yeah. He said, I want you to go into town. Mm -hmm. And when you get there, you, this is what you're going to find. You're going to find an a, 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 a ass tied with a coat. And I, what I want you to do is loose them and bring them to unto uh, me. Now, now, that, that, just just imagine right now. Imagine right now, because I know I know most of you are not not too familiar with the donkey. You don't you don't go into town and see a donkey down there. So let me let me just let me just let me just tell you tell you this this way. Just go into town over there. and You're gonna find a Ford Escape. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I want you to get into that escape and bring it to me. All right. There's not many of you in here right now who, well, Lord, I, I, I don't know about that now. That don't belong to us. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but Jesus said, go. Jesus said, go. Mm -hmm. And listen to this. He said, when you get over there, when you find it, he said, loose it to bring, bring it to me. And if anybody says, oh, Tell them the master has need of right. mm. Now Matthew doesn't doesn't go into the detail of when they got there, what happened. But if you look at uh, Mark and uh, Luke, Luke says that they was asked, "What are you doing?" Right. And say that the master has need of it. And they say, "Very well." I guarantee you, if you go if you go over to Tarboro, uh, if you go over to Pine Tops this, this afternoon, and you 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 loosen that uh, Ford Escape, uh, there's going to be a call to the sheriff's department, mm -hmm. and they don't care what, who you say had need of it because that's theirs. <laughs> right. But Jesus had already prepared everything. Don't you understand, if you're walking with God, if you trust God, if you know God, and if you're following God, that God prepares the way for you. Amen. You've got to know, one, that you are walking with God, and two, that God is talking with you. And when you know that, you know his voice, and you know that he's going to lead you in the right path. Amen. Right. Amen. Our problem is we start following everybody else. Amen. Mm -hmm. And I want to tell you right now, if the man of God tells you to do it, God's going to speak to you. He's going to confirm it to you right now. Because everybody who says that they're the man and woman of God, it's not necessarily the man and woman of God. They are the man and woman of themselves. Amen. But you better have a walk with God yourself. And know God is capable of doing all things. Amen. right. And if you get over there, the man says, well, no, you can't have it. Well, then you need to know you're in the wrong, you're in the wrong spot. Oh, yeah. Because God said that he's going to let you have it. Mm -hmm. You know, God has worked out so many miracles in your life that you can't count. Somebody's even really testified, no, that God has moved people out of my way, has had people bring me money, has had people bring me food. I never expected, but God did it. And he's still capable of doing it. Yeah. But we've just got to trust him. Yes. But look here. This was, as he loosened the, the donkey in this, they brought him to Jesus. The Bible tells us that, that this was done and it might fulfill the, that was spoken of by the prophet saying, Tell ye the daughters of Zion, behold, the king cometh upon thee, meek, and sitteth upon an ass, and a coat, the foal of ass. This was done, and the disciples went and did as Jesus commanded them, and brought the ass and the coat, and put their clothes on them, and set them thereon. Now, we already heard Evangelist I read earlier, was talking about Palm Sunday, that the, the coat was symbol of coming in peace. If a king came riding on a coat, it was a symbol that was coming in peace. If he came riding on a horse, it was a beast of war. It was meant that we were better ready yourself because I'm coming. I'm, 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 I'm bent on raging war. But coming on a dump was symbolism of peace. 
Don't you know there are things that we do in life? Sometimes the way that we carry ourselves. Even sometimes the way we dress. Gives people signals as to what our intentions are. Point, point, point an example. Few few years ago, at work we was in the midst of shutdown, and shutdown is very it's a very uh, it's a very uh, exaggerated time for us at work, and it's it's a time where, personally myself, is I believe that if I if I do my work right during those two periods of the year, I rest the rest of the year. That's my personal opinion of it. So I get I get down, I get dirty. And there came in one guy, he was sent in to help, he, he volunteered to help, and he came in with a white suit on <laughs> and white sneakers. <laughs> That's Joe said it. He already, he already, just his, just his dress, <laughs> what he had on told me. <laughs> I'm not used to that. And after he got down and got dirty a little bit, it only lasted for about a day, and the next day he did not return to that position. Mm -hmm. See, your, when you know what you're having to deal with, just your, your talk, your appearance, can let people know what you're all about. So Jesus came on a donkey. And because he came on the donkey, he was, he was, they cut down, they took their clothes, and they put their clothes on the donkey. And similar as they was crowning and coronating a king, the multitude spread their garments in the way and cut down the branches of the trees and thrown them in the way and said, come into the town and cry, Hosanna, Hosanna. Oh, uh, Hosanna, blessed are the son to the son of David. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the hot. And uh, when he was come to Jerusalem, uh, all the city was moved. And they asked the question, who is this? And the mother's tune said, this is Jesus, the prophet of Nazareth, of Galilee. They was praising him. They were singing Hosanna. They was excited there, coordinating the king, descendant of David, who's going to lead us out of this Roman oppression. They were excited. And people are always excited when a new thing comes their way. They're always excited when they feel that things are finally going to go their way. That they're going to get their piece of the cake. But there's something that happened suddenly, not long after. He rode into town. He went into the temple. There in the temple, he saw how... The money changers, those that sold doves, those that brought everything into the temple was carrying on. People were abusing the law. They was abusing what God had commanded them to do. They were had the doves and they had the money changers and everybody, because not everybody came into town, had a good sacrifice to offer. So in the temple, in the court of the temple, they were there to buy and sell to make sure that there was those there that could have their sins sacrificed, ready. And ready to offer. But Jesus came in and he saw how the his people, how the temple was looking, how everything was behaving. He overthrew everything in there. He cleaned the house. Because he said that my house shall be called the house of prayer. But ye have made it a den of thieves. Thieves and robbers. Didn't have everything going on except for the right thing. Hmm. Church, it's time for us to clean house. Hmm. Now I say as I spoke just now, sweep, sweep as I started, sweep around your own door. Yeah, right. Before you sweep around mine. Right. 
Right. Each one of us need to clean the house. Right. We Amen. need to look at what's not right in our lives. Yes. And we need to present ourselves before the Lord and say, Lord, I need you. Yes. Because there's a world out there that's hurting. There's a world out there that's hungry. There's a world out there that's in trouble. And God's house should be a house of prayer. It should be the place where we don't come in to bicker, but it's the place where we come in to pray and see what we can do to improve the quality of people's lives. I don't know. It disturbed me. Actually, I have to be over to Rocky Mount High School on Thursday. Got there just a little bit after the everything that was going down. Walked well, they didn't know what exactly was going down, but I do know one thing. I saw two, two police cars mm -hmm. and a van. Right. When I first walked in, I really didn't realize that, that it was the panel van. I, but when I came out, I saw at least two people in the van. <laughs> Possibly three. But I knew because they were still sitting there with the door open, they are waiting for some more. And if it doesn't disturb you, it surely disturbs me that almost 2% of Rocky Mountain High School got locked up right. on Thursday. Right. Yeah. If that doesn't disturb you, then it disturbs me. Yeah. If that doesn't disturb you, then something is not right with us. Yeah. Because it means that we have gotten used to this sort of situation. Yeah. Yeah. And we need to make a change. I know they say it's all about it, some gang-related fights and everything like this, but what really concerns me is that these same individuals, when they were sitting there waiting to be processed there at the school, they were sitting there laughing with each other. Hmm. Right. Right. The individual that was in charge of keeping them calm and separated there asked them, wait a minute, I can't understand this. Just a few hours ago, y'all was going to kill each other, but now you're laughing with each other? <laughs> joking with each other? <laughs> See, the problem is, many of us don't understand the causes that we're all in and all about. Mm -hmm. It's just because we want to be like somebody else, and they tell us that we need to do this, or we need to do that. Mm -hmm. What we need to do is be yourself, and realize mm -hmm. that we can get along with everybody mm -hmm. if we just forget about what side of the town we live on. Right, right. Forget about colors and realize we all we, we all have the same color in us and that's red blood flowing through our body. Right. Mm. Trying to tell you right now, the thing, one thing we need to clean up is our is our mind and our attitude. Mm. We need to focus on Jesus Christ. See, because look at this, when we clean up, when we clean up, then we can focus upon our children. We can encourage them. See, because we can tell our children one thing and they see us do another. And it don't make any difference. Because all they know is what they see. The reality of it is some people are visual learners more than they are audio learners. Mm. You can tell them all day long, but until they see it, and sometimes put their hands on it, mm. all that talking you're doing doesn't mean a thing to them. Man. But if you show me that you love me, bring on the back, the back of the bulletin here and say, start for the week. To love means loving the unlovable. <laughs> to forgive means forgiving to pardon the unpardonable. Yeah. Faith means believing the unbelievable. Yeah. Hope means hoping where everything else seems hopeless. Yeah. You can say you love me just because I'm doing what you want me to do. Yeah. But when I don't do what you want me to do, yeah. do you still love me? All right, yeah. Yeah. You forgive me because I do it the way you want me to do it. But if I don't do it the way you want me to do it, on, will now. you still forgive me? All right, man. You, you, you say you believe because you have it. You have faith because you have it. But if you don't have it, do you still have faith that one day God is going to...
to bring it to pass in our lives. Hmm. You have hope. But when it seems like it's hopeless, do you still have hope? But when we clean up, I know we can't clean up our lives by ourselves. Hmm. But I want to let you know that if you let Jesus in, he can clean it up for you. Amen. It may not be like you want it to be cleaned up. Right. Sometimes you may have to decrease to increase. Amen. See, our problem is we don't want to decrease it. All right, we just want to keep growing. We just want to keep increasing. But sometimes you have to decrease Amen. to increase. Amen. But if you're in God's hand, you ought to know that God's going to bring you through. Amen. We ought to clean up. One of the things, look at here, when they cleaned up, the, when Jesus cleaned up the temple, this is what I like, verse 14, and this is the thing that caught my attention as I was beginning to read this. This is the thing that really caught my attention. And the blind and the lame came in the temple and he healed them. He cleansed the temple and when the temple was cleansed, then there was a blessing in the house. Church of the living God, I want to let you know right now, if we get it right, if we do it God's way, there is a blessing that's awaiting yeah. for us. Why come we can't get healed? Because we're still dirty on the inside. Why can't we can't see? Because we're still dirty on the inside. We need to cleanse up. There's a blessing waiting for us. When we clean up, we'll be able to love the unlovable. When we clean up, we'll be able to forgive the unpardonable. When we clean We'll be able to walk together as two, as one in the Lord. Because it's not about me, it's not about you. Because we all have stumbled and fallen. But church of a living God, I want to let you know, don't get upset with somebody else because they're trying to clean up and get right. And you want to stay in your own right, right now. and keep doing it your way. But we need to do it God's way. Yes, sir. Those same people. That was singing Hosanna. Those same people that threw bomb palms in his way on Sunday, on Palm Sunday. Those same people, you know, as the red and saw that he healed the blind, he healed the lean, the scribes and Pharisees, they got upset with him. The sheep, priests, and the scribes, they saw the wonderful things that was happening and they got, that was displeased in him. But they went along. And they put an advertisement out in the local paper. Mm. They got on Instagram. Mm. They got on Facebook. Mm. And they're saying that this man mm. called Jesus is all across town. And he is acting like he is the Messiah. Mm. And we need to slow him down right now. Mm. And we can't find anything Wrong with what he's doing. Yeah. But I heard somebody say that he said that he was the Messiah. Yeah. Yeah. And if somebody could come up with a story <laughs> that will get him off the streets, All right, yeah. Yeah. we'll pay you a fair amount. My, my, my. If someone would tell us where he is, mm. we'll give you 30 pieces of silver. Yeah. Come on, yes, sir. Well, Judas began to look at the story. Mm. And Judas kept it within itself. Mm. Judas said, well, I don't want to give him up mm. because I believe there's great things that he could do. Mm. Well, by and by, <laughs> there was down in the Lazarus house. Mm. Oh, there was down by Simon's house. Mm. And Judas saw this man called Jesus. Yeah. Mm. Let Mary pour this expensive oil on him. Yes. Mm. He said, for mm. much money and given to the poor. But Judas really didn't care about the poor. Mm. He just had the money bag. Yeah. And he felt if he had more money in the bag, they wouldn't notice if a little bit of it slipped out. Mm. But Jesus said, this is a good thing that she's yeah. doing. Yeah. From that point in time, Judas sought how he might betray him. Yeah. They were sitting there at the Last Supper. Oh, Jesus and the disciples were eating bread and drinking wine yes. at the Last Supper. They asked, Lord, who is it that 
shall betray you. Yes. Jesus said it is he that dipped in the pot with me. Yes. And at this point in time, Judas dipped with him. And Jesus said, Judas, what thou do, do quickly. Mm -hmm. Judas went down and he conspired with the scribes and the chief priests. And he sold my Lord and my Savior for 30 pieces of silver. Mm. They took him and arrested him. Took him down to a kangaroo court. There in that courtroom, they had some witnesses that they had bribed and paid off. And they say that he did this and he did that. But he had never done anything against humanity. Right they found him guilty. They whipped him all night long. Mm. They made him carry his cross up to Galilee Hill. They compelled Simon to help him carry the cross. Mm. Some writer picked up the song, picked it up and said, Must Jesus bear the cross alone mm. and all the world go free? No, there's a cross for everyone mm. and there's a cross for me. Mm. They are the hill. They nailed him to the cross. Yes. They speared him in his side. A crown of thorns on his forehead, on his head. He never spoke a mumbling word. Amen. With all that they did to him, with all the acquisition, acquisition, with every rock they threw, with every spit they spit mm. at him, Jesus looked down and said, Father, forgive them, mm. for they know not what they do. Mm. And I want to let you know this morning, church, if Jesus, mm. out of all that he endured for me and endured for you, if he can say, Father, forgive them. Mm. 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 Pastor, you don't know what they did to me. <laughs> Pastor, they, they act like one way, but they are a snake in the grass. Mm. These same people just said, Hosanna. Mm. And Christ was carried to the cross. Mm. But he said, Father, forgive them. Right. Well, Pastor, I, I, I'm tired of the way that they are treating me. I'm tired of their behavior. Mm -hmm. The world is tired. Mm. And the world seems to be men. Mm. But God's children are tired. My, my, my. And we say, Lord, it's in your hand. Mm. Right. I know it's a tough, I know it's a difficult thing to do. It's hard. Because the world wants to say that we ought to act with revenge. The world says we ought to strike out. But I want to let you know that being a child of God yeah. is being separated from the ways of the world. Mm. Being a child of God, being a Christian and walking the Christian path doesn't mean that we strike out at everything. It doesn't mean we take everything also now. All right now. But it doesn't mean that we strike out at everything. All right. But we hold on, waiting on the Lord. Because the Lord will. And the Lord's going to give you the opportunity when the time is right. You know, it's the amazing thing about it is those same people that were standing there with Jesus. You know, Peter said, I have you, I got your back. You know, you go, you go into certain meetings and certain situations and people say, I got your back. Hmm. But as soon as you bring it up and you waiting on somebody else my, to say, Mm. That's why whenever you go, you better make sure you better you better make sure that you're going for yourself. That's right. That's right. Yes, sir. That's right. See, because when you go for yourself, no matter what anybody else say, you're going to stand firm. That's right. That's right. But they hung him on the cross. He said, "Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do." They took him down to the cross and they laid him in a borrowed tomb. But I'm so glad to know that that wasn't the end. Because he cleaned up. Cleaned up the house. Early on Sunday morning. He rose again. With all power within his hand. And because he has power he has given us that power too. That's right. If we walk the way he would have us to walk, mm. I know, 
I know we say we are, we are trying, we are doing our best, but when you've done the best that you can do, you can't find any more to do. Leave it in God's hands. Mm. But make sure you've done the best that you can do. Right? Mm. You know, sometimes sometime I look around and I might run, might be running late getting here. I think I say, you know, I'm doing my best to get here. No, I didn't do my best. Mm. Because if I'd gotten up 15 minutes earlier, mm. I wouldn't have been five minutes late. Mm. Clean up your own. It's time to clean up. Preacher, it's time to clean up. Deacon, it's time to clean up. Choir, it's time to clean up. Mothers, it's time to clean up. Church, it's time to clean up. Clean up for the Lord. Amen. And then let him come in and wash him work. Amen. Wash him work. You say, well, Pastor, I thought you said we can't do it by ourselves. No, you can't do it by yourself. Hmm. But if you make the first step, mm -hmm. he'll make two. Yes, there is no secret to all my God. Please. We pray that you will receive a blessing for the yes, word today. Yes. We pray that you will receive something that will make you think about your life yes, and yes. what you can do in your life. And the path that you want to walk. Mm -hmm. Not the path that others are walking and others have designed for you. Because that's what the games are all about. Yes. They design a path for you. But if the path that people design for you is not what the word says, then you need to say, I want to follow after God. I want to find the history. The doors of the church is open. If there should be one today, we'll send the invitation to you that you may come and accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. If they have not been baptized, we we extend the invitation to baptism. Or maybe you have already decided that you've been baptized and you just want to come back home. The doors is open. The doors to salvation is open. If you desire to unite with Anderson Chapel, that opportunity is also presented to you today. Let us stand. It's the question of the selection. This may be your last opportunity. This is the first opportunity for you to make that step to clean up.
short of the glory of God. Yes. But Father, you have called your church yes. to walk after you. Yes. You've called us, the Lord, to be a help mate to the world. Yes. You've called us to be set aside and to show an example for the world. Right. And Father, in order for us to do that, dear Lord, Father, we need to make an attempt to clean up. Yes. We need to let you in, dear Lord, that you yes, may Lord. do the rest. Yes. Father, we know, dear Lord, that we may stumble and we may fall. Yes. But Father, I'm so glad, dear Lord, although Peter yes, said that I would never turn my back on you, yes, though I would die with you, I yet yes. will I deny you. But yet, Lord, even in the midst of it all, well, when he stumbled and fell, on the early Sunday morning, you say, tell my disciples right. and people. Yes. Father, I'm so glad that you are forgiven, Father. Yes. I'm so glad, dear Lord, that you look beyond all our faults and you saw our need. Yes. You look beyond Peter's fault and you saw the need that he needed you, dear Lord. So, Lord, I need you right now. Here we are. So, we thank you right now. Amen. Now, Father God, around this altar, in the midst of this congregation, yes. there are those who are sick. Yes. who are struggling with trials and tribulations. Yes. The doctors, the Lord, have given them medicine after medicine. Yes. And some, they have seemed to have gotten none work better, but some seem to have gotten worse. Yes. But Lord, I'm just so mindful right now that the woman of the issue of blood said that I've been just but touched the hem of his garment. Yes. And Father, someone right now is reaching their Lord yes. and saying, Lord, if I could just touch the hem of your yes. garment, yes. things are going to get all right. Yes. Some, the Lord, say, Lord, a long time ago I touched you, dear Lord, and that can some say I touched you, dear Lord, and my heart is regulated. Some say I touched you, dear Lord, and Father God, my arthritis don't keep me down anymore. And Lord, I'm thankful to be in the midst of this service. Father, we thank you right now. Father, we ask that thou would just touch them. Touch those in the hospital, yes. those in the nursing home. Yes. Father, we pray for our young people right yes. now. Yes. Father, that they may know that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Yes. Father God, that they may not listen to what the world is telling them, but Father, they'll draw closer to you. And Lord, we pray a special prayer. Right now, dear Lord, right now. for our Father God, for our schools, dear Lord. Yes. Our Father God, not only Rocky Mountain, dear Lord, but all the schools. Yes. Not just here in Edgecombe, Nash, uh, Pitt, but dear Lord, we pray for the schools everywhere. Yes. For Father God, the gangs of think that they are running the school. Yeah. But Father God, we need to stand up. Right. We need to stand up, dear Lord, and let them know, dear Lord. Dear Lord, they may think that they are many, but Father, I believe that there are more of us who stand for right than those who stand for wrong. Yeah. But those who are standing for right have been quiet far too long. Yeah. And it seems like the wrong of the world is controlling the world. But I believe that one day that God's people will stand up God's people is going to stand up for what's right. But dear Lord, in order for us to do that, we must first stand as united as a church. And then united as a church, then churches come together. And Father God, we can make a difference. Yes, we can. If we just put aside our differences and our problems and realize it's all about Right. Father, I thank you for thank you. the ministerial staff that has yes, the Thank you for the deacons. Thank you for the mothers, the yes. trustees, every auxiliary, every ministry, every member. Right. Father, just help us to do it your way. Right. And Father, when we do it your way, dear Lord, you're going to bless us. You yes. answer it right now. Father, we have tried so long our way. Yes. Lord, let help us to do it your way. Right? Yes. Father, when we come to the end of life journey, and we cannot do any more, but we must do like so many babies have done, lay down and die to rise no Father, we ask you for a resting place somewhere over there where Job declared that the wicked shall cease from troubling and that the women shall be at rest. Father, we ask that thou give us that rest. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Yes, Lord, yes, Lord. And all my breakthroughs won't come through without.
will not come to without him. Amen. Amen. We thank God for his blessings today. We pray that you receive the word that will be uplifted to you in your life that will carry you through the week. Now as we look to the Lord to be dismissed. May the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ rest rule and abide with us all henceforth and forevermore. Let this body say, Amen. 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 Amen.